So here we are within PyCharm. I'm going to take a look at one particular class file. So first again, to reorient ourselves, here we are in the main Python. This is what gets run when I compile the project and it builds the game. Um, in the setup here, you can see that a system manager is created. And then if I scroll down a bit here, the custom game system is created. Now all five of the systems that you see here extend the same system class, but we're gonna look at the custom game system to see how the game specific core logic happens. Let me open that up and I'm gonna give us a right font size. So we're scrolling down here just real quickly. You can see that the class is quite large. We've got a couple hundred lines here. It doesn't handle all of the game logic. That is, some of it is separated in other areas, but it's the main one. So let's take a look. First of all, a little bit of Python learnings along the way. Uh, class, custom game system, system is the way to say, I want to create a new class definition, custom game system, and I want it to be a subclass of the existing system class, which is a class that I created. Here in fields, you declare the public fields that you use. Um, and that is somewhat optional, I found. You could skip this step and uh, initialize them in other places, but I was pretty consistent through my classes to do this step. Then I have properties here. I'm borrowing some language from my world of C Sharp and Unity, where property is a variable that I wrap in a setter and a getter. And I do that so that from outside the class, I'm able to set and get but without directly influencing the value of the uh, private variable underneath. Then here's some of the, uh, the life cycle of the systems itself. There's initialize and start. I'm gonna step down with the keys here. Initialize is called from the main, uh, main Python script when all the systems are initialized. Start is when the game would actually start. Maybe the initialize would happen at the front menu of a game and start would happen once you click a start button. In my game, I just jump right into the game. Then the update is called regularly based on the frame rate and the delta time is passed in. That's how much time uh, the frame is taken. I didn't use delta time much in this game, but ideally you would and handle all the movement with a multiple of a desired speed times the delta time so that if your frame rate is inconsistent, uh, you're able to have a game that runs smoothly. So the delta time's there for use, but I only used it in a couple spots. Then I'm able to handle the key input. Actually, here I, um, I have some variables that I've declared elsewhere. I'll show you those in a moment. So I take the input inside of a method handler, but I use the input here inside the update. And that's a strategy that I did. Now let's just jump down to the input itself. So the input system has an on input event and I subscribe to that. Then in here, I get this event handler called anytime that there's input in the input system. So I'm able to look through and using, most of what you're seeing here is Pi Games framework for key input. Um, I'm able to see, did a key get uh, pressed down or let up? The first block here shows keys down. Did up, right, or left get down? I store that in a variable. Then if the key up happens, then I um, set that variable to false. I did this because I want to be able to know while a key is down. And there's a couple ways to do that, but I just decided to set a Boolean when it's down, set that Boolean when it's up, and then I know that while as long as that Boolean is true, I'm holding down a key so that I'm able to move right, let's say, just by holding down the key instead of tap, tap, tap. You can do that, but you can also hold the right key and it works. Um, and then I handle the character collision. Now, most of the game fundamentals that are here, you can take a look at deep, more deeply when you look at the code. And there's nothing really new or different that's happening. It's pretty basic 2D gameplay stuff. I'm rendering out and blitting the graphics onto the screen. I then wipe the screen clean, and the next frame I, I uh, blit all the graphics there again. Pretty straightforward. But take a look at the Git repo, and let me know if you've got any comments. Thanks a lot.